Psalm 118 verse 9 says this, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Now, when it says princes there, it's talking about rulers. And what the Bible's teaching us is that it's better to trust in God than to trust in rulers. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians get caught up in this trap of trusting your ruler to make your life better, make your situation better, rather than trusting God. And so we get so caught up in trying to please this political party or that political party. Look, they're both a scam. The title of this short sermon is called Democrat or Republican Pick Your Poison, because both of them are a poison to our nation. Both of them are a poison to the individual liberties granted to us by God. Now, of course, already, if you check out my sermon called Jesus is pro gun rights to tell how, you know, Jesus told the disciples to get a sword. So obviously the ability to own weapons to protect yourself is a right that God gave us. I mean, God even empowered David by the power of the Holy Ghost to use the slingshot to kill Goliath. But here's the point. Recently, as early as this week, Democrats in Hawaii have launched a proposal to try to get rid of the Second Amendment. Just look it up. It's real. But here's the overall point. It's easy to see how Democrats want to restrict individual liberties. They want to kill babies in the womb. They want to stop you from being able to speak against the sodomites. They want to force you to accept all kind of perversion. And what's more, they want to restrict your right to own weapons to protect yourself. But Republicans are just as bad. It's just a different brand of evil. Recently, there was some hearing where some 18-year-old boy or whatever had had chosen to get vaccinated against the wishes of his parents. And he's testifying before Congress of how anti-vaccination is such a bad idea and how you should force people to get vaccinated. But here's the thing. Let's just pause right there. He survived to be 18 years old and was able to be alive and stand before Congress despite growing up in an anti-vaccination home. The fact that he's even alive and healthy enough to do that, doesn't that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that not getting vaccinated won't kill you, especially considering the fact that he wasn't vaccinated for, I guess, most of his life and he's still fine. Why are we making a big deal out of this? Number two, the kid's 18 years old. So if he's got that much of a big enough mouth to want to go against his parents and want to testify before Congress against his parents, he's grown enough to get a job and start paying his own bills and stop being such a lazy slouch and stop being such a parasite and such a mooch. And so we look at him, oh, you brave child. I look at him, oh, you lazy boy, you need to get to work. You need to stop running your mouth and start working because a dream cometh through the multitude of business, but a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. And so why are we looking at this as such a, why is there even a discussion? A legal adult made a decision that was against the wishes of his parents. If he's already an adult, why do we care? Why does this need to become some sort of national issue, number one? And number two, if he survived long enough to be healthy enough to stand before Congress without being vaccinated his whole life, then doesn't that actually drive further the argument of vaccines being unnecessary to have a healthy society? So all that to say, Democrats and Republicans, most Republicans except for Rand Paul, were in favor of pushing vaccines on people who don't want them and taking away individual liberty. And if you listen to the Republicans, they'll say, well, if you're not vaccinated, you're a threat to the public, you're a threat to the common good. But guess what? The whole idea that you sh should restrict individual liberties to protect the common good, which already is a nebulous idea, that's actually a Marxist argument. That's actually socialism. That's communism. That is fascism. That is a dictatorship right there. That is authoritarian. And so to make our vaccines available to people who want them is one thing. And then it's your choice whether or not you take something like that. But to force it upon people on threat of some sort of penalty, that is authoritarianism. And Republicans, especially, I can't remember the guy's name, but some senator from Louisiana was actually in support of it. And Louisiana is a deep south red state. So there you go. Your Republicans that you trust to protect you, if they're not going to protect your right to not have something injected in your body today, what makes you think they're going to protect your right to bear arms tomorrow? What thinks you? What makes you think they're going to protect your right to free speech the day after that? What makes you think they're going to protect your right to property even after that? And what's more, what makes you think they're going to protect your right to property and privacy? Oh, wait, the Patriot Act. That was signed into law by George Bush. 
That stomped out the Fourth Amendment, and that was a Republican. Well, I guess they've already done that. You see, you can't trust these Republicans, folks. They will cave every time. Marco Rubio caved on the Second Amendment because he's in favor of courts being able to take away your weapon if they deem you a threat without due process. And guess who else is in favor of that type of legislation? Donald J. Trump, the current president of the United States, who's a so-called Republican. So at the end of the day, folks, we got to trust in the Lord. We can't trust in these princes. We can't trust in this two-party system. What I would say to do about it is to make sure that the next time you go to the ballot box, consider carefully who you vo for whom you vote. Consider carefully who you vote for. Consider carefully who you elect and hold them accountable. And maybe, like I said in my video called Letter to Young and Old Christians, have as many children that you can raise them with the correct mentality so that maybe in future generations this nation can experience some form of a spiritual recovery. Because at the end of the day, we've gotten too caught up in trusting in princes. Look, you really think those those uh, Republican senators are immune to being corrupted by the state or being corrupted by corporations that pay them? You really think they're not receiving bribes? You really think they're so honest? They're not, folks. All of these corporations and all of the senators and congressmen are likely in bed together and Big Pharma owns Congress, all of the lobbyism that has taken place. I mean, just think about it. Why in the legal code of the United States is it illegal to sue a vaccine manufacturer for injury, but then they want you to believe it's safe and want to force it down your throat? That's obviously a big contradiction, folks. And for those of you out there saying, oh, well, the measles outbreak, all these outbreaks, outbreaks happen. But you know what? drink clean water, you sanitize, you quarantine, you strengthen the immune system, you keep a good nutritional balance, and that should take care of most problems. Why do you think we as humanity have gotten on just fine for thousands of years before vaccines were even invented? But again, this is a Republican agenda. This is something the Republicans want to sh push down your throat. So you really think they're for protecting your rights? They're not. That's why we have to put our trust back in God. We have to get back to preaching the Bible. We have to get back to focusing on the Lord because these Republicans out here, they don't care about protecting your liberties. They only care about protecting themselves, not you. Now, what is going to fix our nation? What is going to get our nation back on the right track, if that's even possible? Making God our top priority. More Jesus, not more vaccinations. More Bible, not more laws. More morality, not more legislation. Because the Bible says in Psalm 144, verse 15, happy is that people that is in such a case. Yeah, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. You want the United States to be a happy place? Put God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God bless.